Love Them Knives channel, and yes, we're here in the studio today. <sighs> yes, I come back to Kevin John. This is the wing. Yes, it is. It's the folding wing. And don't know why they call it the wing. This is an integral uh, titanium frame lock flipper. Mm, wow. I love this design. You know, they come with, uh, you know, where it's just a blank here. There's no milling in it on either side. Or you can get it with the milled uh, handle, this radiating pattern. And you can get it in blue, purple, or silver. Is that blue? It better be blue. I ordered blue. And I got this and I'm going, wow, that's an awful, <laughs> that's a tough blue to see. That is really light. Really, really light. Okay, so <laughs> just, just for the hell of it. I mean, can you kind of see that's blue? Uh, I guess that's just silver. Maybe it doesn't come in purple. In any case, this is supposedly blue. So we're going to call it blue uh, for right now. I would like it to be blue-er, uh, but uh, this is the way it came. Although, I really love the milling in it. Oh, man, it's nice. I'll tell you what. Okay, here's the lockup. Titanium frame lock flipper. Oh, by the way, M390 blade, stone washed. And it's all good in the neighborhood. It really is. This is nice. And, you know, you got your Todd Begg style pocket clip with the ceramic ball there. That is just really, really nice. Do you like the uh, specialized hardware? Oh, yeah. Well, you got to screw for the pocket clip. And you got a pivot screw. That's it. Oh, but they give you, yeah, they give you the tool. So there you go. You got the tool. Yeah, that's nice. And microfiber cloth. And this zipper pouch. So, yeah. And you should get it because these things are costing around 320 I think I've seen one down to 309 on sale. Uh, you got to watch it because they do have them. Um, uh, here's another one off of DH Gate. This was a different seller and it fooled me for a while. This is S35VN model. So this is 309. So, you know, that kind of right there tells you you need to be careful and watch the correct um, blade seal. Like this one is the M390. So, uh, and I ordered the M390 because that's kind of what they're going to with the the wing. Uh, the Venom Attacker was an S35VN. Um, the uh, New Concept, Venom New Concept was an S35 VN. I think they're offering that now in M390 as well. I think, I think. But I'm going to have to double check on that. I sold my Venom uh, New Concept off, but I, I, I need to get one again. The only thing I didn't like about it is it had this little roto lock wheel on it. Uh, and I, I hate that. I don't like that. This one does not have that. And the action is incredibly good. Great bearings on the pivot. Wonderful action. Um, I mean, this knife is just great. I don't think that detents like... Well, it's, it's relatively strong. There you go. So, yeah, it's probably about a 7. It's It just doesn't feel that strong. Um, good size knife. Not terribly light. Made in China, Kevin John, you may know them. On Blade HQ, they have the Venom New Concept. They don't call it Kevin John. Uh, on From Russia with Knives website, which is Custom Knife Factory, 
in Russia, they have a Venom new concept, not this knife. Uh, and they call it theirs. Uh, it's a CKF knife. So you can buy it on Blade HQ. They don't call it CKF. They don't call it Kevin John. You can buy it off a CKF site and they put it in a CKF pouch uh, for that. So I, I sold that one off. I probably need to get one again someday. Uh, but, you know, they come and they go. I really wanted to get this wing. I really want to keep this wing in my permanent collection because it's a great knife. I was attracted to the design. And, uh, wow. Just, just the action on this thing is really, really nice. It's really nice. It's not a small knife. You can see you've got, you know, not quite a four inch blade, but it's, it's close to a hundred millimeter. It's like in the 97, 98, maybe 99 range. I mean, depending on where you measure it, obviously you go down here to the choil area, you're really into it, right? But into a closer area, you're talking about three and seven, eight, something like that. Overall, come on, baby. Hold on, uh, you know, about eight and coming up on eight and three quarter. So about 22 centimeters. That's a pretty good size knife. It's not nine inches, but it's getting there. Wow, handsome. I just, I mean, all the mill work on here, that's a lot. And I like the way they do that. They radiate these lines out here. And then the cross hatching that goes on. Really nice. And of course you get the tool. So you got the tool for the hardware. That's nice as well. Although um, without the tool, yeah, I think I could figure something out. So it's not that um, difficult torques here for your uh, pin up there. You know, you've got these uh, that look like thumb discs. Uh, and I have, they are usable, but not easily usable. And the problem is I'm putting a lot of pressure on this lock bar, which is not helping the detent break loose. So uh, there you go. So if you keep your fingers away from the lock bar, when you try and use these as a uh, as a thumb stud, it will work. It is not my favorite way to deploy that blade. That these things are just too close. Not much of a cutaway to get your your thumb on there. There you go. Finally, when it breaks loose, it flies open. Flipper tab. Check that out. Where's the flipper tab? I mean, that is not much. That's not much of a flipper tab. Uh, I was looking around the table to see if I had some obnoxiously large flipper tab knife laying out here, and I really don't, actually. But, I mean, you could take, like, the cut jack. Eh, that's not much, but it's even less than this, and this is not that much. But you know what? There's enough there. You've got jimping on it. You've got enough here to get a hold of and the flipper tab is far enough back you can get your finger in front of it so you can take advantage of that jimping the detent it it i guess it's stronger than it, it doesn't feel that strong although this thing doesn't gravity flip very easy but yeah so it's not that difficult to overcome um and I guess I'm not grabbing it on the lock bar hard enough to really uh, prevent deployment that much there. It's just, I guess I'm, I'm doing it differently when I'm trying to do this thumb stud. So yeah, yeah, tougher, a lot tougher. I don't care about using that. Although I do like these um, thumb discs or whatever you want to call them up here because it does carry this pattern on over here and gives a little bit more design interest to the blade and to the overall design of the knife, at least as far as I'm concerned. 
Well, I think we looked at this about 30% lockup. Uh, integral, but you know, 300 some dollars. You know, well, the LW Apache, I did a video on that, and it's also a Chinese kind of relatively unbranded, I guess, or one that a lot of people that don't deal with the, the direct Chinese markets don't really know the LW brand. That knife was in the 330 range. This knife's in the 330 range. To me, Kevin John is more well known. So, uh, and I've had the Apache in my hand. I prefer this from a design standpoint, from a color standpoint, because the Apache I had in my hand had this kind of a yellowish kind of strange color, which I didn't care for much. Uh, but this seems heavier, nicer. I mean, hey, I've had, have I had some integrals? I had the Lion Steel SR11 Titanium Integral, the Aluminum Integral, the uh, LW Integral. I've had the uh, Spyderco uh, Integral. I've had the, <laughs> I've had the uh, several Reich <clears throat> Integrals. I've had the uh, Reich Thor 3 and Thor 4 and Thor 1 in my hand. And you know what, tell you the truth, I mean, you're talking about the Thor 1, which is the $600 knife. I'm the Thor 3, which is a $550 knife. Uh, I like this one. And, you know, if you catch it just right and you go through Ebates for a little extra on the AliExpress and, you know, this and that, you might get it for close to 3 even. So, I mean, in that case, I'd say it's... It's a buy. You've got a mill pocket clip here and no hot spots there. I mean, you've got a lot of machine work going on here. Pretty nice. I don't know. Will it cut anything? Do I care? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, you know. It's M390. It comes reasonably sharp. I um, came in contact with uh, one of the viewers that has a connection over in China. So I didn't buy this directly off of DHgate. I bought it through a guy he knows over in China. So I got, I got this for under 300 bucks. So that was a crazy good deal, I thought. I, I'm glad that they didn't skeletonize this too much. I like a little bit of weight in the knife, and I don't like it milled away too much like the Reich uh, Thor 3 knife. This is more like the Thor 1 Integral, and I, I do like that a lot. Well, let's take a look inside and see if they did any other skeletonizing and no nothing there so you got your hardened steel insert to interface with your m390 blade which is perfectly centered any blade play no lock rock absolutely none the action's incredible Feels really good in the hand. Very ergonomic design. How's it feel? Reverse grip. Good. Can you sharpen it? Oh yeah. So you got the sharpening choil here. You've got a real easy go up and down this blade. Now, look at the blade stock here. So you've got this reinforced tip here, pretty much. You've got good blade stock. So for piercing, yeah. Almost kind of a modified sheep's foot or, I don't know, modified tanto, whatever you want to call it, with this uh, swedge that runs up here. But you've got a lot of belly along this knife here.
you know, I never even looked on YouTube to see if there were many reviews on this knife. And I usually do try and see what's out there and who's responding and what they're saying, but I totally ignored that actually before I did this. I know one thing, I really like this knife. I've had this for probably a month or so and have really spent some time with it, but I haven't put it to any really tough cutting tasks because it's a $300 Integral. <laughs> it's not gonna do that. It's gonna be proud carry. I'll cut some strings or things or something, but no, this is not gonna see any hard use, hopefully. I try and keep most of my more expensive knives fairly pristine. Just saying. Supposed to be about four millimeter blade stock, so let's get out here and see what we got. Eh, 3.75, I'm out here a little bit. I don't know, I can't, you know, get my stuff down here. But, uh, 3.8 something, bopping around. So about 1.48, 0.148 of an inch. See if we can get this over here. And just about a half inch, which is 12.3 millimeters across here. So it's, you know, it's not over a half inch. Some knives will go 0 0.53, 0 0.56, even to 0 0.60. So this is under, this is 0.48 something. So it's in that range. I mean, you know, it's really, really close. So it's about standard size. Feels good, like I said, in the hand. No really go forward place. You can, I guess. I mean, I don't feel that this choil is adequate for really much up here. And you don't have any jimping on top. And do I care? No, I don't. I'm not sure that I'd want jimping up here. I, I mean, this is just a design thing that it's just so smooth. Um, I don't know if I want to call this sophisticated or um, futuristic, primitive in a way. Um, you know, just kind of a exercise in design and machine uh, proficiency because it's integral, because it's uh, well done. I, I don't know. I, I was really attracted to it. So, you know, there you go. Money out the window, lust buy. Uh, does it make sense? I guess when you're talking about integrals, it's really not that expensive. Uh, it's cheap when you think of uh, some of the integrals, like the Reich integrals. Uh, it's in there with the Lion Steel Integral. So, uh, and I like this a lot better than the Lion Steel Int SR11 Integral Titanium. I, I just, uh, that knife, I struggled with. This knife was just beautiful right out of the, uh, slid right out of the pouch. Incredible, beautiful action, just, just beautiful. Didn't have to put a drop of lube on it, although you can if you want, uh, on the pivot, but I didn't. And uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just, you know, maybe a little bit too guillotine. Eh, eh. Maybe, I, no, no, it's dropping just about the way I want it to. I was gonna say maybe too guillotine. I might've been thinking about my attacker um, but no, this is just right. It just came adjusted perfectly, perfectly centered, uh, beautiful. And you know, what, what more can you say other than how much does it weigh? Let's find out. 5.6 ounces. So it's right in there. You know, it's not heavy, like six ounces or anything, 160 grams. So yeah, I mean, for a full titanium frame lock flipper knife that is just shy of nine inches long, uh, no, that's that's right there. That's right there. Wow. 
quite a knife. Really feels good in the hand. Uh, and you know, if this is a design you like, then that's fine. If it's a design you don't like, wow, you know, then you don't get it. I mean, at some point in time, yeah, it's well done, well executed. This is not like buying a CKF, but I don't know, can you buy an integral CKF for 320 bucks? Because no, and not that I've seen. Uh, you can't buy many CKFs for under 300, that's for sure, unless you catch them just right. So yeah, yeah, I'm liking it. I think Kevin John just does a great job. You know, I know they do some knockoff stuff as well. Like the, they make a Matrix, which is a good size knife. I've had it in my hands. I've sold it off. Again, I will want that back someday. And they go for like 165 bucks. Not bad. Uh, pretty damn smooth knife. The Venom Matrix, the Venom Attacker, the Venom 2 at one time. And I think it might be coming back, um, which was the CKF Deboia. And that knife may be coming back in M390. I'm hearing, but don't quote me on it. In any case, what can I say for right now? My lust affair is with uh, Kevin John. I I'll, I'll tell you what, I got I to gotta bring you in on the uh, Venom Attacker M390. I did one on the Venom Attacker S35VN, which probably is adequate. But I think I might do an update with my new Venom Attacker M390, the S35 is gone. And uh, oh, that, the Venom Attacker is just an incredible knife. And I, I didn't buy it, and I didn't buy it. I, I, I don't know if I just wasn't feeling it with the bolster and this and that. I really preferred the Venom 2, and now I'm totally flip-flopped on it. The Venom 2, I could probably take or leave. The Venom Attacker with how seamless that carbon fiber is, especially on the blade, it's just incredible. The only thing this thing is missing is it didn't give it didn't give me uh, the tritium insert. You know, you get that on the Venom Attacker um, and some of their other knives, I think even on the Matrix, or the Venom too, but no, not on this one. So, ouch, no tritium, oh well. Hey, still, it's lust. Yes, it is. I really do. I like what Kevin John does. It's, it's, they do some really good work. Their knives are world class, uh, uh, in my book. I mean, I've handled a lot of knives. And it, it, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy. I'm real happy with this. Real happy. All right. Thank you for joining me. Subscribe if you'd like. We do all kinds of strange knives and very conventional ones. We have giveaways, we have table sales. If you subscribe, you'll keep up on it. Whether you actually want to watch the video or not, at least it'll pop up. You can see what's hanging around. That's why I subscribe to people's channels too, just to kind of see. I may not watch what they do if, if it's something I'm not interested in, but it's always nice to keep track. You always you never know, you might run into something new and interesting. Subscribe if you'd like. And join us next time in the studio. God only knows what's coming down the road, because you know what we do. We love them knives, so stay sharp. Are you